Hello, what's up, y'all? It's Poppin' with Cracking It's D-Boss. You're to this Pearl Fountain vid. It's titled, Every Shot Kendrick Took on Watch the Party Die Explained. Okay, we're gonna hear about these supposed shots that he took. Um, I didn't even react to this song. I wasn't interested. <laughs> um, people were telling me to react to it in the comments over here. They're like, yeah, you gotta react to Kendrick's new song. He rapping on some real hip-hop shit. I was like, mm, mm, that's not sounding like something I'm gonna be into. So I previewed like maybe the first 30 seconds of the song. And I didn't even finish it. I was like, mm, you know, I'm not interested. It's not my personal taste. I am not this hip hop head and I never claim to be a student of the culture and I'm into, you know, deep lyrical rap. Like that's not the type of rap that I listen to. Um, I mean, I like some lyrical rap, but some of it I don't. And there's a big chunk of Kendrick's uh, catalog that doesn't resonate with me. So um, this sound like uh, 616 a bit. Like it gave those vibes, uh, and that was my least favorite song that he's released recently. So, yeah, I wasn't into it. And on Patreon, I react to things that I'm into, that I'm interested in. YouTube is for what y'all are interested in. Patreon is for what I'm interested in. So, I wasn't interested, so I did, didn't react to it. But apparently he took some shots on the song. So, yeah, we're going to hear what, what those shots were and hear what he has to say. Let's watch. On the new song he dropped on Instagram last night, Kendrick broadened his scope from Drake to the culture as a whole with a somber reflection detailing an image of a biblical apocalypse, letting the current state of culture burn to make way for it. Mm -hmm. Directly quoting the language of the book of Revelation, where John writes his own prophetic vision of the apocalypse. Shout out to JF Musics for pointing this out first. The song isn't actually called Watch the Party Die. It's Untitled, and fittingly, it almost exactly mirrors Untitled 1 from Untitled or Master. <laughs> The song that prophesies the apocalypse that the industry is heading towards in its current state. No more running from war wars. No more pedal talking, jump neighborhood wars. Just as John from Revelations prophesies that the church was giving itself over to Jezebel, Kendrick directly name drops Jezebel here as what's leading artists to jail. His prophecies about Drake's fate and euphoria are expanded here. Have you ever your enemy down like with a poker fate? Just walk that man down, let it go, heavy one is solid. It's love but tough love, sometimes gotta result in violence. Arguing that just walking Drake down on the world stage isn't enough to save the youth, but that it was an early warning of the larger implosion coming everywhere in the culture. To burn a whole village, we start over, it's really that time. From media sources like DJ Academics. The radio personality pushing propaganda for salary. To scammers. They glorify scamming, you get chipped over this credit card. You know what I thought was really interesting? I saw this clip where Academics seemingly admitted that Drake has been paying him throughout this beef. I'm, I'm gonna try to find the clip and, and include it, but I was like, what? <laughs> are, are you are you admitting that you getting paid to to be Drake's cheerleader and, and push, you know, this propaganda and, you know, come at Kendrick every chance you get? Like, I, I thought that was very odd. I'll let you think whatever. Oh, yeah, Hack's so stupid. Hack's, Hack's getting used by Drake. Yeah, Hack, yeah, Drake just used me to get, like, a cup of milk. I like that. <laughs> to people using their music to promote violence or just flexing their wealth. We even killed the killers cause they like taking innocent lives. Flashy nigga with nasty decisions using money as a backbone. Taking down Drake was really to him just an example of the larger shift he prophesizes is coming next. And parallels throughout the lines on this song and the diss tracks reinforce that. He says, A reason with these niggas if they can't see the future first. Which establishes his role as a prophet but also references the song that started the beef. Like that. A song where future came first. That line about scammers and credit card chips echoes back to this line on Euphoria. Everybody wanna be and these lines kind of make it clear that he wasn't just talking about Drake. The role this song plays is expanding the meaning of that original line. He did say, everybody want to be demon, not just Drake. That the entire industry is following that spiritually corrupt path that he called out Drake for, and they're all doomed to go down with him. The cover of the track displays a picture of black air forces, which could be interpreted in a couple of ways. The first and most obvious is Kendrick using the picture to show what time he's on, as black air forces are associated with being dangerous and ready for action. The second way you can interpret this image is as a response to Drake's diss track push-ups, where he shows a size 7 shoe label to mock that Kendrick is short and has small feet, I guess. There's a third way you can interpret this picture, but I'll get to that point a little later. Kendrick here is most likely speaking about the current status of hip-hop culture or even the entertainment industry as a whole. In an age where a money-hungry industry shamelessly provides self-deprecating and detrimental content a platform and promote said content from being a shameful embarrassment to the new standard kendrick seems to be calling for an end to this spectacle it's worth noting that this song was timely released exactly when the 2024 vmas commenced 
quite literally interrupting the party. Kendrick speaks about the violence in the cycle of death, saying, we even kill the killers because they like taking innocent lives. Have to add the way even those who commit violence are caught in a vicious cycle of destruction. He follows with a call to burn it down and start over. With the context of Kendrick Lamar's artistic career starting as an advocate for his community and the incarcerated in Section 80, to a voice for the voiceless in Good Kid Mad City and to Pimp a Butterfly, to giving up and feeling defeated regardless of what you do on Damn, to giving the black community a roadmap to healing on Mr. Morale and the Big Steppers, it seems that Kendrick Lamar has come to the conclusion that trying to reason with people who don't see the bigger picture is pointless because they don't want to see it. He expresses that there's no use in arguing with those who are blind to the future when a circus is already in full swing. He condemns the glorification of scamming and superficial lifestyles many promote, calling out influencers and those who talk down on him for not playing along with the industry's trends. But understands they don't hate him, rather they hate what he stands for. Kendrick gives them a reminder that he has consistently embodied patience, integrity, and wisdom. Qualities that are rare in a world obsessed with instant gratification and fame. Personally, I believe this implies they not only hate what Kendrick stands for, but they hate the fact that they don't embody the same qualities. Conversely, he celebrates and acknowledges the few that are actively seeking to empower themselves through reading and education, making a clear distinction between the men of substance and spiritual depth and the men who are devoid of it. Now, as to who Kendrick is alluding to when he mentions these two camps can be referred back to the Black Air Forces on the cover of the track. Bluntly, if the shoes fit, where? The choice of artists he name drops throughout the song is very intentional. He sees them all as positive influences on his own life. They refuse to sell their souls and stuck to their own values and morals. From saxophonist Terrence Martin. Terrence Martin said I'm mentally, but layers true. To fellow Compton native Jay Estrada. My nigga Jay Estrada said I gotta burn it down to build it. To D1, a rapper turned Tufts University professor who holds his Christian faith at the center mm -hmm. of everything he does. I want him to be empathetic, my heart like D1. To Lecrae, another known Christian rapper. Sometimes I wonder what Lecrae would do. These artists never reach the mainstream despite their positive messages and influences. For a lot of the same I'm reasons, really people cool. have the reaction to this song that they did. After Kendrick's Not Like Us, a lot of people were expecting a party hit. But Kendrick is expressing in this song that he sees the need for a spiritual reset, a somber and slower death to the old way of doing things. That won't be any fun at first. That's gonna take a longer and deeper reflection on the way culture does what it does now. A realization from the artists on top that pushed perversion and a messed up way of living, that they won't just be leading the youth down the wrong path, they're also leading themselves to their own caskets. Parading gluttony without giving truth to the youth, the graveyard is company just Tell us what casket the truth. Finally, in a gut wrenching line, Kendrick states, would trade all of y'all for Nip, expressing his disappointment Damn. in the state of the culture, making it clear that Nipsey Hustle, a symbol of integrity and growth, is worth more than the collective empty behaviors of those that are currently occupying the industry. In the course of the track, Kendrick essentially breaks into prayer, talking to God about his divided thoughts on what he should do, saying, God bless these words, dear God bless how I think. Dear God, draw the line, they're trying to confuse him with me. The course highlights that at the end of the day, Kendrick desires peace and clarity, and he's asking, he's pleading for some sort of divine intervention, but ultimately decides to continue with raging war, saying, Dear God, please forgive me, you know how hard I try. I think it's time for me to watch the party die. Listening to this, you can't help but feel this intense weight of emotion in Kendrick's voice. Leading the moments throughout this reflection where he can hardly hold back his anger and disposition to violence. Even holding himself back from finishing one of the threats during this moment of the song. But I will. At its core, this track is a response to everything. His critics, the fake narratives, and hip hop. Throughout his discography, Kendrick Lamar has taken many approaches to these sentiments, using music as a weapon to dismantle what he sees as wrong and rebuild something meaningful. And throughout this entire process, He's watched the art form he loves decay before his very eyes. Kendrick has reached a breaking point where words simply aren't enough. He's done explaining and he's done reasoning with those who refuse to listen. Instead, he's preparing to make a bold and undeniable statement through his actions, forcing people to see the truth even if they've been ignoring it all along. So he's popping out and showing it. It's, and whatever he does next will most likely be the embodiment of this new unapologetic approach. Okay, it seems like Kendrick is on his deep thought provoking type shit, which again, <laughs> not what I'm typically into. I mean, sometimes I am, it depends on my mood. But yeah, it seems like overall he's trying to call out the toxicity in rap. 
Um, so it seems it's just not about Drake. I mean, Drake basically embodies that toxic image, but there are several other rappers who represent that as well and who spew these uh, messages that negatively influence the youth. So he's calling that out. And, you know, he's typically on his activist shit and he has these hard conversations through rap. So, I mean, I respect it. You know, you can't get mad at a nigga wanting better for hip hop and wanting better for society. So, you know, I, I see what he's doing and, you know, this is in line with what Kendrick represents. So I'm not mad at it, but again, it's just not my personal taste. I feel like songs like this are cool to listen to and, you know, receive the message. But as far as like having replay value, I just don't see that for it. You know, like I like listening to entertaining rap that I could listen to in the gym, in my car. So maybe I'm a part of the problem. <laughs> but I mean, I don't need the toxicity in, in rap. Um, you know, there are a lot of things that, you know, are stated in a lot of songs I listen to where I'm just like, mm, that was kind of weird. Mm, you need to say that, you know? <laughs> so I can, I can definitely uh, take some entertaining rap without the you know, crazy negative messages and the toxic messages and I'm skeeting on your mama. You know, like, I don't need to hear that. <laughs> so, yeah, I feel what he's saying for sure. Um, but, yeah, we'll, we'll see where he goes from here and what, you know, direction the, the new music goes in. But, anyway, y'all let me know what y'all think. Let me know what other videos you're going to watch and I'll see you on the next one. Bye!